Uh, Cassian <coughs> got to play uh, quite a bit on Wednesday. He got to fill in for Yamamoto there. Are, are you looking to possibly leave leave him in that role? And can you just touch on how he has sort of been able to help on whatever? That's the utility type player that Zach is. He, uh, you know, whether he's in a 10 minute game or a 20 minute game, he finds a way to, to contribute. I liked his uh, size and his tenacity the other night against uh, against the line they were matched up against, and uh, you know kept him in the game too. We uh, when there's not a lot of power play and penalty kill, and he's a prime penalty killer for us. You sometimes forget about those players, so we brought him back in, and we could have that line together tomorrow. And on a bit of a different topic, but you often reference baseball when you're making a comparison to, to things in hockey and the playoffs are on. I'm just wondering where the connection or the passion for baseball comes from. from I think there's a lot of um, crossover from sport to sport, um, and you can make your point. I loved playing baseball when I was a kid, and my oldest, uh, you know, some days I wish he would have continued to play baseball, but he's now a hockey player. Uh, there's a lot of football analogies, too, where, uh, you know, the, the quarterback and the receiver, you've got to run your routes, the ball has to be delivered at the right time in the right spot, and then you've got to be able to handle it. And we, we use a lot of those analogies to get the players to think differently outside hockey a little bit, but um, they're hockey players. They want to see themselves play hockey, and we can't overdo it. Todd, uh, yesterday Yager suggested that Connor McDavid could one day break Gretzky's record of 92 goals. That just seems so unfathomable now. just wondering what your thoughts on that were. Um, you know what, it's great that, that he thinks that. Uh, I'm sure not going to put that pressure on Connor. I'd like him just to play a good, solid game night in and night out. Um, it's hard to get 100 points in the NHL now. 100 goals uh, may be borderline impossible, but we'll see what happens over the next few years. Todd, do you think Yamamoto will, will lose the nervousness in the second game that he showed in the first game where he wasn't doing the things, obviously, he did in the preseason? Well, I'm sure he will. Um, it can be overwhelming for a young man to come in at, at 18 and, uh, and play. As I mentioned yesterday, the, uh, the consequences for execution go up immensely from uh, exhibition season to regular season. And I'm sure in the back of his mind he wanted to play an error-free game. And um, you know, I mentioned in the morning also that we, he's got to make mistakes and we can help him. He's got to play his game. And... Uh, Sometimes you, you get a little too tight, a little too, uh, too nervous, and you try and make the perfect play all the time or make the safe play. Um, I'd like to change that from perfect and safe to smart because he is a smart player, and um, if that happens, he's going to be fine. After the Calgary game, you were as happy as you were about the hat trick, you were as happy about the way your team played team defense. Can you kind of speak to the evolution of the way this, this team plays defense as a five-man unit now compared to maybe a few years ago? Well, we value it. Um, it's important. You know, we take pride in it. We stress numbers to the group. And there is a threshold that you need to fall into regardless of how much offense you have. You have to fall into that threshold to, uh, to be a successful team, to get to the playoffs, to have success in the playoffs. And... Um, Getting the players to believe and understand and take pride in it is real important. I think we've got there. And then the tools to do it. Uh, clarification as much as you can on, on the defensive side of the puck. Clarifying responsibilities. And then players have to get it done. You've got to hold them accountable for it. And, and I think our team is, is embracing that a little bit. Um, they feel like our goaltenders need the help. They deserve the help for the number of times they keep us in the game. So... Um, why not play defensively strong night in and night out? Convincing skilled players that offense does come from defense, once you get that message through, is that a major hurdle? Well, Connor's goal the other day that everybody's talking about, um, you know, we got the clock on him and he was going this fast and all that. Nobody saw his stick position and how he stripped the puck from Furlan, uh, being in good defensive position. The rest of our team was tired on that shift, yet they weren't flying all over. They were playing well defensively. They made the line change when Connor took off with the puck. Those are things that we stress that, um, you know, the eyeballs all go to Connor and the goal, and that's great, but the rest of the guys did a tremendous job at the back end of a shift when they were tired to create that, that situation. Todd, last year, 
your defense pairings at even strength. Your one and your two were pretty even. Um, last, and it's only one game, of course, but your second and third pairs were basically identical last game. I know there wasn't a lot of penalties, so maybe that played a part. And your number one pair slightly higher. Do you expect your two and three pair to be fairly even in even strength minutes this season? I think the game dictates that and uh, the level of play those individuals are giving us. Um, you know, some teams have one go-to line. Um, other teams have two or three of them, and that di dictates how many minutes. Power play penalty kill dictates how, how many minutes they get. Um, if you call Clef and Lars our number one pair, and they stink on a given night, uh, common sense is we got to pull them back a little bit. So I don't know what uh, the ideal number of minute distribution is. I just know that we go by gut during the game and play them appropriately. Todd, all the penalties in the preseason, yet there was only three last game. Were you shocked at that? Did, you, did both teams just do a splendid job like in regular season where there were hardly penalties called or what happened? Well, in watching it again, there weren't a lot of situations where you could even see the referee miss something. Uh, both teams, I think, adhered to the new rules face-off-wise, uh, certainly the chopping and the, the hacking. You know, I think every time there's a borderline breakaway for Connor, you can probably call slashing slashing penalty, but, um, you know, they, the, the hand didn't go up, the arm didn't go up, pardon me, in, in those situations. But, um, you know, it, it, it took some of our players, Mark Latesto in particular, out of the game because there wasn't that much of a, a special teams battle. So I'd like to think it's us adapting to it.